Uh, kia ora, welcome and greetings. Uh, welcome to the Mana Talanoa Legends of League series. And it's a great pleasure for me today to be talking to two players who played for Pura City, they played for Wellington, and they also represented the Kiwis. So I'd like to welcome into Mana Talanoa, uh, Don Munro and Warren Colico. Kia ora, guys. Good morning. Kia ora. Kia ora, uh, Andre, and kia ora, Don. Yeah, good, good, to, good to have you on board. What wonderful and be able to um, have a have a chat this morning. So let's maybe go back a bit, and I'll start off with you, Warren. Understand you were from Auckland initially, and be interesting to know your background, where you grew up, and you know maybe your introduction to league up there if that was your first sport. But um, yeah, yeah, your your background. Well, I was um, born in 1950, which is a long, long time ago, um, and I went to Mount Roskill primary, intermediate and grammar school and I played soccer football from age 9 to 17 and uh, at Mount Roskill Grammar I made, I played, I made the first 11 and one of the other players in the first 11 side was Brian Turner who um, became a famous all white. Of course, yeah. yeah. Um, John Hart went to Mount Roskill Grammar, the all black coach from way back and um, myself uh, representing the Kiwis in rugby league. I, I don't know if anyone else has achieved top honours at the school, I don't know. But uh, anyway, I, um, I, I, um, so I played soccer from nine till 17 and then I sort of got a bit um, tired of playing the soccer. So my mates played rugby league and I used to go and train with them uh, every Monday and Wednesday night. And um, the next season, I I decided to switch to rugby league. And um, that was in 1968. And played in the junior grades. Then in 1971, I was promoted to the premier team, who who we played Otahu in the final that year. Um, well. Wow. And the reason I got promoted into the team was that the Kiwis went to Britain and France that year mm. and they weren't allowed to play. The players selected to go on that tour weren't allowed to play in that final. And um, uh, we had a, we had Henry Tartner and Gary Willard in the Kiwi side. That Legends, year. yeah. And um, anyway, we played Otahu in 71. We lost. But... The next year, 72 through to 75, I was a regular in the Mount Albert Premier side. So, um, But that's that's fascinating. You mentioned um, playing soccer from the age of 19 to 17. It's no wonder you were a goal kicker and had a prolific goal kicking um, uh, history in, in the game. And also some of those, um, you know, like I said, John Hart, Brian Turner, some, some amongst some big names there, yourself being one of them. In terms of your family, like your, your parents, they were from Auckland. They're originally from yeah. the area as well. Yeah, we were all from Auckland, and um, there was a, I had a sister, myself, and mum and dad. Yeah, yeah. Look, and that '71 Kiwi team that you know, they were the team that went over and um, pretty much cleaned up on on that uh, UK tour. Um, but still, I can imagine that Otahu team would have had some pretty handy players running around. Oh. But, who were some of the 71 players playing for Odahu back then that you, that you recall? They were, they were a strong club back in those days. Um, but, but um, you know, I, I remember um, watching the Kiwis thrash Aussie 24-0 at Carlow Park that year before yeah. they went to Britain. That's right, yeah. And I was sitting on the grass, you know, up by the scoreboard, the grass, the grass grandstand, we could call it. It was a shitty day. It was raining, and it was the ground was as heavy as hell. But you know, little little did I know that um, six months later I, I'd be playing for the Kiwis in 1972. You know, from sitting on the grass watching yes. this test match, and then six months later get chosen to go to Australia with the Kiwis. Well, mate, ma magic can happen, and we'll come back around and talk about those Kiwi games and tours, but. I'll come over to you, Don. Look, and just your background. Um, you, you're from Porirua. I, I, we know you, you have a Cook Island background, so it'd be, be good to um, hear about your background, your 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 fucker papa, and your and your family links back um back in Porirua and to the Cook Islands. Yeah, sure, mate. Yeah, I was um I was 
born in 1952 in Wellington Hospital. And the family was actually living in, in Newtown at the time. And um, when I turned 18 months, um, the, and my mum was crook at the time, <clears throat> and my grandmother was over from Rarotonga. And uh, she decided to take us back with her, my, myself and my cousin Ron Agnew, Porky, and uh, would look after us for three months there while mum recovered. Um, anyway, about four and a half, five years later, we come back home. So speaking a different language and, um, and of course dad must have been, well, was involved in, in rugby league and for, uh, I think at the time was for Miramar um, in, in Wellington. Uh, and that's how I started playing league was just going to the club and, and uh, ended up playing in the midgets and coming through the grades with, with the church family, Mori Church, yeah. Yeah. Church, Bimbo Church. Um, they become family friends. Um, and then I think I was still going to college when I was still playing for Miramar and, and uh, Porarua was a young club. It just sort of started. Um, and uh, Miramar just folded uh, in my division anyway, just started folding. And, and then I moved out to, well, I uh, joined up with the Porarua club. I'm not sure how old I was, probably probably 15, 16 years, yeah. um, and then just started coming up in the grades through Porua. Um, played third division uh, for a while and then moved up and played our way into the premier sides later on. That's fascinating to hear that you spent five years in, in Rarotonga. So, and you, you learned, you know, you picked up the cook on and real while you were over there? At the time. Well, that's all I knew. Yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. know. Eng I, I didn't know any English. So it was uh, uh, relearning the English language back here. You know. So yeah. Um, I went to a school that that had no idea what I was saying. I didn't have any idea what they were saying. So, you know, it was just uh, because Dad was the only one that could understand it at home, and um, I'd and he'd be gone to work before sunrise and and home after sunset. So, not a lot of time spent there. Um, talking to someone that could understand, you know. So that was a long, long process. And then mm -hmm. I went to Mana College. I went to um, Nati Tua Primary School, which is just down the road from where we live. And then uh, graduated to Mana College. Um, and then, yeah. And uh, the, well, that's the college at Sam Hunt. Uh, everyone would know as a poet. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was there and Gary, Gary um, McCormick. You know, some yeah. of the names that are quite well known around New Zealand, yeah. But, but uh, yeah, well, that's, that's sort of my history there. Um, that's, yeah. that's pretty much how I started. I, uh, league was always in the family before, you know. You um, mentioned the, Mir the Miramar Club and in the, in the church family who are strong and the referee, yeah. well known, and yeah. not only in Wellington, but across the country. Um, the referee, um, Bill Mann, um, is, is he part of your... Family line as well through the, the oh, Munros yeah. and the Agnew and the Rasmussen yeah. family. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Willie Man, Willie Man was playing in for Porirua as a hooker. Um, so we all pretty much come up together, you know, uh, with the club. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Uh, who, who else is there? I'm just trying to think of. Uh, Porky was playing for Porirua before, uh, like we were playing together with Miramar, but Porky came over to. To Porirua before I did. Yeah, yeah. Well, the hooker loves, tour loves, you know, course, all yeah. those things are fairly well known in rugby uh, league in Wellington. So, well, yeah. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll look at the Porirua club now. And, and with you, Warren, so you're up in Auckland, Mount Albert, Carlaw Park sitting on the on the fringes there. Little did you know, six months later, you'd be a Kiwi. But then, you know, then you came down to Wellington. What, what was, what motivated you to come down here and and support into a city and, and, and play. Well, I got a call from uh, the late Bernie Wood, and he asked me if I wanted to come to Wellington on a three-year contract. You know, we, it was sort of, um, we were lucky to be sort of maybe getting a little bit of money in those days. And I turned it down at the start. I, I didn't really want to leave Auckland. But then um, I, I had a chat with my wife and, um, she said, let's go for it. So I rang Bernie back and said, is the offer still there? And he said, yeah. 
So I came down in 1976 as player coach for Porora City. Mm. And, you know, I, it was a pretty good team that I came in. I'd never coached before, so it was new for me, but it was a pretty good team that I came in to coach. It was, they, we lost a few, some good players. Um, I think Knox and um, someone else went to Batoni, didn't they? Um, the Knox to Huri Huri, yeah. And yeah. Mark, Mark Brandon. Mark Brandon. Mark Brandon. Yeah. Was Mark, oh, Mark Brandon started in Puriru, right. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. 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 They went to Batoni. So uh, anyway, we, we had a pretty good side and um, we, uh, we, we, won, we, took, we won a lot of games that year and made the grand final against your, your Randwick uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> club. And sure. we got beaten. We were upset. If, if one game mattered that we had to win, it was yeah. that game and we lost it. And, you know, it was, it was a pretty... You, when yeah, you lose too. a grand final, it's pretty hard to take. And um, so... And I think it affected the team in 1977 and 78. We weren't the same. I think that loss mentally scarred the team, and um, we just battled away in the next two years. But we we probably well on the day we weren't good enough to beat Randwick, so it came down to that, and that's what happened. Yeah, I think like there, were, there were probably one or two other players too. I eh, Warren that um, like Victor Bracken. I think he he changed to a, a different team. I think he went over to he went to Patoni actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, he went to Tony, but we we didn't. Uh, he he was he was good player, very good player, but he didn't play on Sundays, and we had a lot of Sunday games. That's right. That's right. He was yeah. Norman, yeah. A lot of Sunday games, and yeah. uh, we couldn't play him in the final either. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I must. Uh, I've got to say one thing that's that's um, been on my mind all these years. I, when I selected the side to play in the final with the with a couple of the other senior players, we left Alan Church out of the side on right. the bench. And I, I realised that was a mistake I made that day. I'm not saying that we would have won the game had he been playing, but he was a prolific try scorer. Right, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, he should have played. But it's a blue I made and I learned, you know, you learn from your mistakes. Well, that's right. Well, yeah. well that's right. These, these things happen. And with grand finals, it, Anything happens on the day, bounce of the ball. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, players just go that extra bit, and um, the, the result, the results, anyone. And, and, and same with picking players. Um, you can go a whole season, and um, you know, at, back in it's particularly harder in your guys' time. There's only 13 players and two subs. It's, yeah, that, that, yeah, that was the yeah, that yeah. was the that was the thing. So, so for you, Don, like, so you you were already there when Warren turned up. Yeah, so, yeah. A little bit, you know, you, you were there. Who, who were some of the players, the coaches? And it'd be interesting what the impact was around the... Your thoughts now, later on, when someone like Warren came down from Auckland and uh, his impact on the team. Yeah. Well, Ken Bates, my, my um, father-in-law, uh, was coaching as well at the time. Um, he coached us. Uh, I'm not sure what year that was, but he also coached the Tokolauan team that we had. Um, and they went through the whole year undefeated. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you've heard about that team, but uh, yeah, that was a great team. Um, who else? Bill Matira was coach. Um, but I think you know when Warren turned up uh, in in the scenes. I mean, his goal kicking, his just appearance of being there. It sort of it sort of inspired the team. And and I think initially when we did well was because. Warren was there, and then you had John O'Sullivan who come in and coached, I think, Upper Hutt. Um, you had Eric Carson come in, and he was playing for um, St. George, was it? Mm. I mean, yeah, those yeah. players, when they come in, sort of had an impact on the game, you know? And it well, was Brian sort of, Jolly uh, came down. Yeah. And Brian Jolly, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, you know, um, uh, Bill Francis, I think, spent a that's bit right, of time yeah. in Wellington. Yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah. And, and that had a good impact on, on the game in Wellington, you know? So uh, those are some of the guys that, that I that I, you know, but it was yeah. it was a pleasure playing with with Warren, um, being like he says a prolific goal kicker as well. And I always wanted to ask you, uh, Warren, why you you did change to uh, rugby league at such a, a late stage of your soccer 
So, oh, you know, that's... now I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, uh, those names you, you you read are off there, you know Brian Jolly, um, and I remember Bill Fr Francis. He was the professional that came out from the UK yeah. uh, from from the Welsh team. From the yeah. Welsh team, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I understand he was a pretty he was he had a lot of speed, was very fast as well. One of the things powerful, I yeah, quite a powerful recall from reading about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know, um, Hooker Love and the Love family uh, and the, the Tor family have a lot have had a lot to do with Porirua. Um, yeah, talk. Both of you talk, talk talk a bit about the you know the kind of legend of the, of, of Hooker and, and Porirua and the, and, the, and um, what he did for the players around him. Yeah, well, Tor Tor was the most senior of them. Um, he Tor, yeah, there there are <laughs> Hooker Hooker was um, Hooker was a brilliant player. Everyone knows Hooker was a brilliant player, mm. um, but he was always a captain when he wasn't a captain. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one game there when uh, we were playing in the Wellington team and uh, John O'Sullivan was the captain and um, and John opted, uh, when we got a penalty, John opted to go for a, a goal and of course Hooker interfered and, and was arguing with John on the field about no, we should be going for a tap and run. But anyway, that was, that was Hooker, you know, he was yeah, quite a strong headed yeah. sort of a sort of a guy but he, he certainly did the job on the field when he had to you know along with Tor on the wing Tiori Tiori was another one um, he was the, the bigger brother of the three um, sadly uh, you know the ball all three have gone so yeah, they, so they, all, had, had them talk for them. they all had they all had different strengths in their game yeah, the yeah. Hook was brilliant and I think one of the greatest things Hooker ever achieved for himself, we went over for an Amco Cup game, I think it was in 1978, to Sydney there. And um, his name to fame, we played Illawarra, we got hammered. And uh, anyway, his name to fame was doing the Harker on the Sydney, uh, at the Sydney Opera House the night before the game. <laughs> okay. He took some of the boys down to the Sydney Opera House and, and they performed a Harker down there. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's always good having the characters, you know, every team you've been in, you know, there's all types of players, the, the serious student of the game, the naturally skilled fellow who doesn't do a lot of training, and um, the, the athlete that's always training, and, and, and you've got to have the, you've got to have the, the fellas that bring a bit of fun element to the team and keep you yeah, on yeah. your toes, and South Wales Hooker was one of those yeah. sort yeah. of guys, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, yeah he was. Um, no, he, he was probably a bit unlucky that he didn't go a bit further in the game than he did Hooker, because he... Yeah. He was a very live wire player, you know. Mm. He was a match winner, actually. Yeah. 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 Look, Warren, mate, you went on and played for Upper Hutt after that and, and um, got your grand final win there in 79. What, what, um, talk about the change to Upper Hutt and who was around you in that Upper Hutt crew back then. Uh, well, Steve Brewster came down from Auckland, or well, he'd been in Christchurch, but he came to Wellington to work and they, he was appointed the coach and I toured with the Kiwi Colts in 1973 to Aussie with them and uh, Upper Hutt approached me to play for them so I, I went I went to Upper Hutt for a couple of years, two, two or three and in 79 there we uh, we had a good side there and uh, well I wasn't going to let this one go but we played Petoni in the final at the hut at the Petoni wreck and it was blowing a northerly, a hell of a strong wind. Anyway, we beat, we beat them 9-5. And I got my first um, championship win. And as you know, it's a great feeling to, to win a championship. So yeah. that made, made the... Yeah. And I also, I also um, got recalled back to the Kiwis in 1979 mm. from mm. Upper Hutt. But... I only played one test and it, that didn't go too good and I, that was my last test match. So, Well, well, that's interesting. Let, let's, let's go to the Kiwi now, Kiwis now. And, and for you, Don, being selected for the Kiwis, um, I was trying to think, in, like 1974, was it, when you selected or? Uh, 74, I think, yeah. Um, 75, 75, 74, I was selected. Um, I didn't play any tests. Um, 75. I was selected, um, and I played three tests, and uh, it was France, Wales, and England. 
Um, that was the only three tests that I played. Uh, I did the tour to Australia, and we had uh, six friendly games over there or build-up matches over there. And uh, of course, Phil Orchard and um, Mocky Brewerton were the were the wingers, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. so it was. Um, it, it was it was it was good, you know, to be alongside those guys. I had a lot of respect for them, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was certainly going to be a battle to try and get in ahead of those guys, you know, uh, for a place against Australia. Um, but it was all learning, you know. It was all learning for me. It yep. was totally new. Um, plenty of nerves, you know, as I guess every player goes through nerves, you know. Um, and then we. To be honest with you, when we had the trials for that, being selected for that team, I didn't feel as though I played that well to be selected. Um, but when we had a retrial, when we come back from that trip, uh, for the trip to the UK, um, I felt I did have a better um, game in the retrial. Mm. But hey, you know, that's, that's the way it goes. And it was all learning curve, you know. Um, um, the game against France um, down in Christchurch, that was the same weekend. Uh, the All Blacks played Scotland, I think, up in um, Eden Park, and both fields were underwater. You know, that's right. <laughs> and I think I was thankful because they told me that I was up against uh, the uh, French sprint champ. You know, on the wing. <laughs> <laughs> so conditions like that sort of helped me out a bit. I think you know, we beat France twenty-seven nil that day. Um, yeah. yeah. So those are some of the memories that I can sort of, you know. Fantastic, yeah, yeah, and and for you, for you, Warren, you know, you 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 got selected a little bit earlier, yeah. But talk talk about you know who was coaching back then and who who were some of the key influences in the team for you, Warren, um, uh, in the Kiwis. Well, if I could just go back to '75, there where Don, yeah, you know, yeah, we played, yeah, we played home and away World Cup matches, so we went, we played in Aussie and New Zealand, then we went to Britain. And Don didn't make the team. And I, I thought that was, he should have been in that side. And I, I think that, that hurt you a bit, didn't it, Don? Not yeah, yeah it did. Too. Yeah. But, um, um, you know, he should have gone. Um, but they do strange things, selectors. So. But anyway, sorry, what was the... Um, no, you look, oh, just some, some reflections on your being in the Kiwis, you know. Who was coaching back then? And, um, you know, we mentioned well, some of the big players like Philip Orchard, Mocky Brett, and look, did, were the both of you, you know, you're playing around, were you on the field at the same time in the Kiwis, same tours and same games? Yeah, yeah, I played a lot with those two, and because um, John, John, John Whitaker was either a winger or a centre, they, they, they switched him into the winger or centre, yeah. and, and, you know, I was the fullback, um, uh, but the coaches, our coach in 72 was um, Des Barchard. Oh, sorry, it was um, Laurie Blanchard. Laurie Blanchard, yeah. yeah. The 71 team there. Then in 74, it was... Um, Geordie Menzies. Geordie Menzies. Geordie Menzies, yeah. 74, 75. Yeah. And then in 77, at the World Cup, it was Ron Ackland. Then in 79, Seth Mountford. Yeah, I had all those coaches, but I think um, of all those coaches, I think Geordie Menzies was was my favourite coach because he was a player's. He he got very close, and the players responded to to his what he wanted done, mm -hmm. and um, you know, and he was apparently a, a great player from the west coast, and and he advanced it on to the coaching um, circles. But Fantastic. Also, other you know, there's you know other coaches I've had that have been really good of were Neville Denton, Bill Sorensen, mm. mm. and uh, Mike McLennan. Exceptional coaches. Yeah. What What are the things that stand out for you about them as a coach? Well, well, the fact that they you know they all they all played the game and um, you know Neville Denton and Bill Sorensen were were legends back in the sixties. And um, I don't know. They just they they just related to the players, and the players responded to their to what they wanted, you know. And that's that's what made their teams so successful. 
successful. Yeah, and, and for you, Don, um, some of the um, best coaches you've been around that, that you um, were heavily influenced by? Um, I, yeah, I guess I wasn't in the Kiwis long enough to sort of experience. I only had Joey Menzies. Um, uh, uh, Club-wise, I think, you know, um, Ken, Ken Bates sort of, um, I, I got a lot from Ken, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, he played a lot of his league in, in the UK um, and then come back over and had a few games here. So, yeah, his knowledge in the game was pretty good, you know. Um, other coaches, I sort of, I sort of, uh, Bill Matira was okay. Now, I talked I talk to you about uh, Bill's son, Tura, Tura Matira. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he, was an, uh, he was an incredible uh, sportsman, you know. Um, and I heard, and I don't know how true it is, I heard that he played his first premier matches at a very young age, you know. Um, but he was built like, you know, someone who could handle it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and when I say uh, a young age, somebody mentioned, um, you know, 12, you know, 14. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous, really, you know, but, but that's yeah. the sort of sportsman <laughs> he was, you know. And he went to Mona College and he was in the athletics teams and that. He was just uh, uh, an awesome athlete to, to watch, you know. Um, sadly, he's, he's passed away some years ago as well. Um, but uh, yeah, there's there's other players from the club that that I I think are worth. There's Tamaruduku. Do you remember Tamaruduku? Yeah. 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 I I remember a game we we played. Um, Tama was like a um, a bear cub, and he played <laughs> like a bear cub until somebody came up with an idea of we've got to get this anger out of this person to get him to you know um, steamroll. And I don't know whose idea it was, but the boys, uh, in, in, I think, in, in the scrum, they come up with this idea that they've got to give them a smack in the nose as they go down in the next scrum. Um, to this day, I don't know who it was. But anyway, um, that's the only time I've ever seen a bear cub become a, a, a full-grown grizzly bear male and in seconds, you know? he uh, <laughs> Whatever happened, it, it, it made him sort of... Uh, after that, he just ran with the ball, and and I don't know if you remember that, uh, Warren, eh? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, he it's passed cool. away this year. Did you know that? Tell me, did he? Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Holy hell. Well, maybe last, uh, maybe last, yeah. last year. Yeah. 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 Those those sort of things that I remember uh, uh, about the club, but I remember that, and I don't, I still don't know who it was that uh, gave him a smack in the scrum, but he thought it was the opposition. <laughs> But it certainly brought the the the, yeah. the best out on him, you know. That's it, Tamaruku, yeah. and he was very good with the boot as well, you know, goal kicker. Yeah. Any memories like that for you, Warren? Any particular sort of unusual standout moments that happened in your Purirua days? Yeah. Oh, just well, Sundays were always good when we played up there at Nartoni Park. Yeah. Uh, we'd uh, we'd end up going back to someone's house at the, at the uh, after the game or or after the after match wherever it was someone had bring tony apanui um <laughs> you remember him uh, yeah top? yeah on the piano he was the guitar player or well, the piano player was he piano, was yeah. so we'd go to someone's house and the guitar would be there and the and the and the piano the flagons had come out and, Fantastic. and you know, everyone went back there, and it was a it was a great. Uh, even though it was a Sunday night, it was um, it was quite a good occasion of everyone getting together. You know, and yeah, it was good yeah. for the team spirit as well. Well, that only part became the 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 Porra City um, Club grounds after that because they lost the um, Elsden Park ground there, eh? To yeah. to hockey, yeah. Yeah, sadly no longer used El um, Nartoni Park, uh, but I will remember that iron sort of fencing and the Purirua supporters would really bang on that um, <laughs> on that fencing yeah. when um, you know to, to put off the opposition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, they, what what's the park used for now? Is it... I'm not sure what they use it for uh, now exactly, but they're certainly not playing rugby league there. Um, yeah, uh, near the time, most yeah, of the footies at yeah. Cannons Creek these days. It's still Cannons Creek yeah, Park is yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, is where, where it all happens. But look, 
guys, big big career in um in, in, in rugby league for the both of you. Then, then afterwards, like for your, yourself, Don, you, you you got involved with um Waka Ama, and um it's we're just having a little chat about that before we come on and yeah. Tell us about that sport. It, 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 it seems to be something that a lot of football players gravitate to afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, we, um, Helen and I left Wellington, um, I think it was in 84, and we went to Auckland, um, and, and we had eight years in Auckland, um, but I developed a, a, a crook back over the years not doing anything um, and having a, a family business in Wellington, lugging pianos and things and carrying heavy weights and that. Uh, had an effect on my back so we were in Auckland and I thought well I like it up north here Kaitaia so we eventually moved up here and um, somebody introduced me to to Wakarama I thought it was a crazy idea at the time because um, my back was was pretty bad um, and I thought well it's, it's better than sitting around so uh, I joined up with the club and started doing this paddling um, and things started to work out in favour of my, my condition. And I spent some years here. And um, I think I started in, in 2004. And, um, and I got my first title in a single, um, national title in a single in, 19, in 2006 uh, in, in my division, which was the Senior Masters, and then uh, again in the Golden Masters. So. Um, yeah, the, the sport's really done some, you know, magic for, for health-wise because it's a, a, a low to sort of no impact, but has um, a, a lot of effect on your core strength. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, and, and met a lot of good people, you know. Um, so, if, if, if people are going to sort of want to continue on with a sport that's not too, you know, aggressive, and that, that, that would be the one. And it seems to be... Uh, a lot of them are joining joining Waka Ama. And, and while it's not an impact sport, um, it certainly can get a high intensity. And I think when you're a, an ex-footballer, rugby or rugby league, yeah, um, you know, when you're in the ring, so to speak, there's a high level of intensity that you've got to go through, and sort of helps yeah, yeah. you when you when you um, cross over to a sport like Waka Ama. Um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, mate, congratulations on those titles in, in, in the sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's sort of. A, I mean, uh, I was with the surf club when we were in Wellington, um, and Jim Campbell belonged to this to the yeah. to the surf club as well, and and he got the sport up to where it is even today. You know, today mm. is very strong still in surf boats, and um, we we rode the Cook Strait, uh, did a marathon across the Cook Strait there, and the club come in first, second, and third. You know, so uh, and it's still strong now as it was back then. Right. Well, it's interesting, those kind of surf sports. I, I know it's one thing in Australia that, um, well, back in the day, was the off-season training for the players um, belonging yeah. to the surf club, you know, swimming, um, running the beach, running the sand dunes, all, all that sort of thing. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Warren, for, for, for you, mate, I know um, after you were playing, you were also part of the administration and on the Wellington Board of Control. Um, yeah. What was yeah. that like, move, moving from being a player and then into the administration side of the game? Oh, I quite enjoyed it. I, I I was approached to join the board of control, and which I did, and um, I think I was on there for maybe five, six years, and I was made the draw master, which I quite enjoyed as doing as a, as a job because I always liked doing draws. And back back in those days, rugby league was strong, and um, there were lots of grades. You know, there were a lot of grades back in those days. Anyway, being the draw master wasn't an easy job. <laughs> and, you know, you think once you've done the draw and you, you send it out, everything's sweet till Saturday. But the number of phone calls I used to get <laughs> all day and night from disgruntled bloody club uh, people. Oh, why are we Why are we not playing at home this week? Or why Why are we playing at two thirty again? Or you know, <laughs> and you just couldn't win, you know. But anyway, you, you just you just had to get strong and say, look, this is what it is. Yeah. yeah. You'll get two home games in the next two weeks, and you know that that's the way it goes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it all worked out in the end, and. Um, yeah, yeah. But it was, that that was the only drawback to getting all those phone calls saying why are we playing, you know, not playing when we want to play. Uh, yeah. Look, it, 
volunteering in sports, always, it's always a, um, a big commitment and you're never, never going to please everybody. I think I was probably in one of the clubs or teams that said, ring this draw master, we don't want to travel out there. It's the second time yeah. in a row. But, <laughs> you know, and, you, and, and you did stick to your guns and, you know, and that's, that's, that's um, I think that's key when you're doing those things, making decisions and, and so people have clarity about what's going on. Yeah. Um, that's there, great. There was a team, the Upper Hutt Army, yeah. They had a team in Division Two, I think they were, and they got every home game at their army base because some of the players were maybe on duty and they couldn't get away, but they could oh. get away to play league for 80 minutes. So they got, <laughs> they got a home game every week, and that finally came up. Someone said, why are they getting home games every week and we don't, you know? And, oh. Oh. That stuff. I might have to try and find a few soldiers to play in the club so that we can yeah. get the draw. Get the draw. Hey, guys, been awesome talking to you. Really thankful for your time um, today. Uh, it's been awesome hearing about your um, careers, your families, um, your time in football and out, outside of football, and, and the contributions that you've made to the sport, um, particularly for rugby league in Porirua and Wellington. Uh, really want to thank you. So, um, Namahi Nui, uh, Kia Kura. Um, thank you very much. And um, it's been a pleasure having you on Mana Talanoa Legends of League. So, Kiorana, thank you. Uh, Thanks, Kiorana. Thanks, Andre. Andre.